Hello, welcome back to the channel. In this video we're looking at quizzes. It's been a while since I looked at quizzes so I thought it was worth jumping in and having a look. So down the left hand side we've got the menus. You can find quizzes, you can see there's some recommended quizzes based on topics you've created or there's various categories and you can find a quiz you like and then it's possible to save it and edit a version. So if you're not quite happy with some of the questions or you want to tweak the level, you can do that. So first off, we're going to go and just show you how to create a quiz. So we'll call it James Demo for the moment. You can then choose which category it fits into most relevant. I'm going to call it professional development. And then we can start to add questions. We can teleport in questions. We can import questions. And that's typically via a CSV file. So we're going to create a new question. So you get your preview of what your question will look like. Let's just put So we can identify if it has a correct answer. We can say whether it's a single answer or multiple select. And then we've got a choice of either typing in our answers or adding an image. So we add an image and we can just drag and drop images on there. And again, we can click on the image and drag and drop images onto there. And again, drag, oh, get the right one. And then the final one. Okay, so having added our images, we can choose what is the correct answer. So it's possible to add mass equations if you want and you can also add an image or audio if you choose. We can then alter how long they've got to answer the question, so they can have up to 15 minutes to answer a question. And when you're happy, you can hit save. Uh, and then you can carry on just by clicking on the plus to add a new question. And a similar sort of thing, so we could say Okay, and then we could put in our answers as text. Now it's possible to add mass equations as well. So you wanted to do it for mass. You could tag it to standards. Uh, and in this case, we're going to have a multiple select answer and save. Uh, so in the case of that, both of those will are correct answers. As so we've had multiple questions and we can get rid of that. So you don't have to have four questions and save. And as you see, you can have a preview of the question just there as well. So that's how you add questions. We're going to now finish that quiz. You can add a an image to the quiz there. You can add grades, you can align it to standards, and you can import from a spreadsheet. So let's finish that quiz. And again, you could do further things there. So grade-wise, you could select the grades, so it's just professional development, and it's visible to everyone. So we'll hit save and then it'll off if you want to share that. So, 
that's how you create a quiz. But what I really wanted to focus on was assigning a quiz for homework, because at the moment, lots of us are having to work remotely, and this is a great way of providing our students with a quiz to do in a particular set window. So if I go into my quizzes, I can choose the quiz I want to use. I can click assign for homework. I can then set the deadline. So that's giving them one, one day and three minutes to complete it. I can then scroll down and adjust some options. So I can say they can have as many chances as they want, or I can restrict them. If I restrict them, it will require the students to log in. So for the purposes of this, I'm not gonna do that. I can then choose whether I give them the answers after the question or whether they just see them at the end. Uh, there's something called power up where students can get more points, but that only works if you choose to show the leaderboard. You'll know your students, you'll know whether they're happy to have a leaderboard or whether it may just uh, lack affect some students and lack their motivation to be to play if they're going to appear on the leaderboard. So let's turn off power ups and disable the leaderboard. But you could leave it on if you were doing it as a bit of fun activity at the end of the day. Scrolling down, you can play music. They can have a redemption question. That means if they get one, a few incorrect, they can get a question and answer it again, a second chance to answer it correctly. And you can shuffle the options. You can also choose the memes. The memes are the animations that appear in between each question. Um, and again, you can either have those switched on or off, and there's a, a variety of memes that you can choose. So I'm gonna sh turn off the memes. And then when you're ready, you just simply click post game. So it provides you with a link which you can share it to Google Classroom, or you can copy the link and then that's the code which they need to join. So if I swap to a different instance of Chrome and paste in that link, because it includes the code, it means it'll come up straight away with the name sign in. So you can enter in the name and you can start the game. It will ask them to sign in. I'm not going to do that. You will still get a record of the names they put in, even if they don't sign in. It's just they won't have a record. And then the question, the quizzes start. So, and these, the first question was a multiple select. And again, multiple select, uh, I'm using text-based response this time. And if it's multiple select, you have to submit the button. Oh, and then once they finish the quiz, uh, this is the redemption question. they get to, to, to review. So again, it's gonna ask them to sign in. They get to review their quiz. So it says how many were correct, how many were incorrect, the average time for answering. If we scroll further down, we can see the ones with the red along the side are incorrect, and the ones with the green are correct. If they click onto the question, it will tell them what their answer was and what the correct correct answer was. And they can go through and look at all of their questions like that. And then a feature which was reasonably, re reasonably recently introduced is for study flashcards. So if you click onto that, they can use them as flashcards. So you click start and they can read the, the first part and then flip to reveal it. If they didn't get it, they can click needs to review if they did they can click got it and it moves on to the next one. Likewise, you go flip, 
it needs review it leaves it to the side and you can work your way through that and you can view either the question or the answer so that's a really useful feature so the final thing I'm going to do is just jump back and look at what the teacher sees so we're going to end that game imagine the time has elapsed I can now go into the report and have a look at how the various students did. So down the left we can see the type of game, so assigned is for homework and we get a summary of the accuracy percentage, so I can click onto that. I'd see all of my students listed here, there's only just one because it's only me who's played it. I can go to questions and look at exactly which players were which and if I expand a question I can see who answered what and how long it took them to do so. I can download a spreadsheet as a summary and if I click on overview I get a grid style display showing who answered what. So there you have it, quizzes, probably one of my favourite quizzing tools. I love the homework feature, makes it really useful uh, and easy to set it for them to do remotely. So I hope you found the video useful. Keep watching, keep subscribing, and there'll be more EdTech videos.